Hello everyone, welcome to the Access Sport Podcast. Um, delighted to be on location today, sitting in a beautiful office, courtesy of, of Brendan Flood, owner and chairman of, of UCFB. Good to see you, Brendan. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, great to see you too. And um, as I say, we're, we're fortunate enough to be in their offices in Piccadilly today in Manchester. So uh, the, the podcast today has got a, a number of themes. Um, first and foremost, it's to announce the, the formal partnership between Access Sport and and UCFB for the benefit of, of our students and our staff and above all else our programme. So first of all, Brendan, thanks a lot. You know, delighted with that and looking forward to, to working with you guys on that. Yeah, no, thanks Gary. Um, um, we, just for introduction of ourselves, you know, what we are, UCFB is University Campus of Football Business and we, at postgraduate level, we have the Global Institute of Sport and what we, what we have currently is campuses in Manchester, Wembley and Miami and then we have global study hubs in Toronto, Atlanta and then Melbourne. So we're, we're established all over the world and we give our students, it's really important to us to give students the taste of that networking that's required when you want a career in sport and, uh, and that's, that's what we've found when we've been discussing ideas with with Gary and his team that you know we we want we want young people who really are passionate for sport they want to come to us because you know they want a vocational education and they want to see the world in a different way absolutely I couldn't agree more and, and that's for me where the synergy has been between ourselves and UCFB we're, we're both really passionate about making sure that students are at this age and, and and up to you know up to 21 or the age when they're ready to step into the workplace that they've had as much exposure to the worldwide you know industry or the worldwide market um so to speak but again i've said there's a, a bit of a dual purpose to this i want to speak to to you brendan about your journey you know to, to where you yeah. are now and yeah. um, i get we'll go beyond that as well where you, where you see ucf in yourself but yeah. let's let's go back to, to to brendan floods when he was 16 years of age and you know at the, the age where many of our students are now or have been you know you yes. had choices maybe in school talks about growing yeah. up as, as a lad where did you grow up what were yeah. your interests etc yeah so thanks gary yeah i i grew up in rossendale near burnley uh was brought up as a burnley fan you know which has been hard <laughs> and um you know we we always kept always really interested in sport played a lot of football and cricket never made it professionally but I was, uh, when I was 18, I was desperate to get into sport and become a journalist doing this sort of thing, doing interviews on TV. Uh, but there was no natural pathway. And so I basically ended up working in banking and then had a career in property um, and did well. And do you know, did a lot of shopping centers and retail parks. And then when I got to the point where I was uh, around 40 years old, I was still going watching Burnley, you know, and taking my kids and uh, wanted to change the club or wanted to change the style of football we were playing as we were, we were basically bobbing around the bottom of the championship, Division 1, and the club was in a difficult period, you know, turnover was only 6 million, we were losing 2 million, it was, you know, it was 8,000 fans turning up, it was in a bad place. Um, so I decided to get involved with the club. So I bought in initially and uh, became very entrenched in, in the development of the club at that time because we needed so much. So I, I committed, which seems a small amount of money now, about 10 million pounds for the development of the club over three years. Uh, that was for players principally to improve the squad. And uh, this would be going back to 2006 and the aim was to be promoted within that three-year period and uh, thank thankfully we got promoted in the playoff final against sheffield united in 2009 and uh, it was a, a wonderful experience you know as a local boy you suddenly you bought your football club and then you get to the the playoff final and you're back in the premier league first time in 35 years you know 40 40 odd thousand burnley fans were there at the final the town only has 75,000 fans. <laughs> it must have been empty in Burnley that day. <laughs> yeah, as one of our former managers said, you could fit the whole of Burnley into Old Trafford. <laughs> and so uh, so it, was a, it was an amazing experience. 
and that and that sort of really you know gave me a lot of a lot of joy you know personally but what what i found you know that was i got asked a lot by young people how do i get involved in football how do i get involved in sport and um and i thought back to when i was 18 you know your age and i was i thought actually that's what i i wanted to know and um i thought what i'll do is do something which principally was for people in the area i'll start a, um, a higher education institution at burnley so i started to visualize it in the context of what would i want as a young man uh, and I, and we all we all share that excitement when we're in a football th football uh, stadium we get we get excited you know the airs on the back of your neck go up you get that that stadium experience you know and you're visualizing the games and thinking about the crowds and the songs and the the whole thing and then you and then you might catch sight of the players the managers etc so you so so we decided that we would create a university where the teaching was was partly and wholly stadium based and um so we began at Turf Moor in Burnley back in 2010. And uh, our first group of students that, at that time was 60 students from all over the UK. You know, we had some kids from London, Birmingham, Liverpool, et cetera. Um, one, of, one, of the, one of the lads who came, you know, was, was probably not the, you know, not the greatest academically, you know, and he was quite, he, he had some, some issues, some challenges. But he was really uh, he was really good at marketing and media, and um, he he stayed the course for three years, and uh, completed his degree, and now he's the head man on media for the England team. Wow! And um, and he was he was a rebel, you know. So he was, but now he's one of the cool guys, and it and it just shows what can happen, you know. You start humble beginnings. And you, if you if you're dedicated enough, you can get the opportunities. So our our, our particular um, mandate as we started life as an institution was was to get close to employers, to get our students the ability to learn from within the industry rather than looking at the industry. So we we prioritise a lot of employer partnerships to get students internships and. Um, and because we are around facilities which are professionally based facilities in the main, um, the you know the opportunities to work with the clubs, the trade partners, are high, and um, and and we we want to get the students the the best experience they can have at that moment in time, you know, and uh, be familiar with all of the key brands, whatever level, whether you're in the finance and business side of, of football or sport, or whether you're in coaching and performance, or whether you're in media and marketing, you need to know the brands, you need to know the people, you need, you need to get an understanding of where they hang out and why they hang out there, what the conferences they go to, what are the, um, you know, what, what are the big events that they think about, you know, and, and then if you're 18 to 21, Get yourself in there, get yourself knowing them, and that, that's what we focus on. Well, I'm going to give you the chance to have a, a swig of water, <laughs> because that was some pitch. Um, and, and, and listen, we've spoke about this at length, and, and, and I know that you, you, you feel very passionately about what you've just, you know, what you've just discussed then, or, or what you've just told our students and our staff. Um, I'm going to take you back again, and then come back to, to you, Sheffy, in a moment, yeah. if you don't mind. Because yeah. if I'm a student or a member of staff watching this, I'm probably thinking, you know, we spoke about six form has come through Burnley and then suddenly he's investing 10 million in Burnley. I know there's bits that have gone on in between that. You've always been a football fan. Yeah. yeah? You, yeah. you know, that always. was your that was your passion. Yeah. How how it's you know, at sixteen or eighteen, did you did you study A levels? Was that what you've done? Talk yes. us about your education yeah. and, yeah, sure. and what, how did you take that first step and talk us about your first, yeah. you know, experience of work. Yes. That, that's interesting to me as yeah. well. No, I will. So uh, so yeah, I did uh, all levels as they were known then. It's GCSEs, GCSEs now, yeah. yeah. So uh, did that, and then I was one of six. I'm from a big family, and I was like the younger end, number five. So we were there was kind of a line of expectation in the family uh, that we all we all went to university. Um, I 
I didn't go to university, so I did A-levels. And, um, and my dad was made redundant at the time. So that was the reason I didn't go because Pressure. we didn't have the money in the family and that they needed me to work. So I went out to work, started off life in Barclays Bank, you know, so- I'd be Is that your first job? Very first wow. job, yeah, yeah. Decent so, job. Yeah, yeah. I was washing cars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they were, honestly, it was, uh, I was uh, the, the junior in Colm Branch yeah. up in Lancashire. And uh, I used to specialise in cleaning the fish tank and okay, drop, drop, dropping off the post. It wasn't that glamorous. <laughs> <then. laughs> but yeah, we all start somewhere. I think yeah, that's a great yeah. point to share. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, we all start somewhere doing something. And, which, and that's, that's kind yeah. of what I want to get onto. I mean, yeah. sometimes people assume that, you know, someone who's successful, that you've, yeah. you've just fell across it or someone's given you money or yeah. whatever. And I wanted to certainly express I know that's not the case no, with yourself and no. I want to talk about that and, and keep keep going and talk yeah, to us how you've yeah. gone from cleaning fish tanks. <laughs> I was uh, yeah so it started off there in in Kona and it, and it was very much about you know you you had to get to know people and get and show that you 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 were important to the team you know yeah. so so even though I was uh, a junior position I would put myself out, show as important to the team. If anyone asked me to do an errand or, you know, do something that I didn't really want to do, I'd always do it, you know, and uh, I'd just turn up, turn up, you know, be consistent every day. Um, we had a, a hard working ethos in the family, you know, sort of background, uh, say six kids, no family money, you know, my dad, my dad was uh, worked for a company all his life, but didn't have any, any money. So we, we just kind of worked hard, got educated and, you know, got ourselves out there. Um, so, so I then got an opportunity to go and work in London when I was uh, about 20. And the bank said to me, do you want to go and work in London? Two year return. And, um, and, I, and I took that opportunity. And my advice to all young people is, get yourself uh, opportunities to go beyond your comfort That's zone comfort our zone. comfort zone you know mine mine was you know burnley area gary's you'd be liverpool area wouldn't you and you by going out into other places you learn about different types of people cultures uh, but you also suddenly bump into opportunities knowledge opportunities job opportunities friend opportunities so it's just your world grows exponentially and um and i think that's that was a big thing that helped me you know i went to london suddenly became um uh open to lots of different things and then came back north to manchester when i was about 24 uh settled down then you know got was married. that still in london yeah. then was it still for barclay still was it banking related yes yes so yes yeah, so i went from barclays and um, and then a customer of the bank who liked who liked the customer jib as we used to say, <laughs> um, he he basically thought, oh yeah, I like this kid, you know, he's 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 handy, and um, and he said to me, would you would you come and work for me? He was building houses, and uh, and he and he had a small property business really, so he asked me to go and work with him because I was. He, you know, quite good with people and, and also quite financial. And, um, and I used to love, love talking about sport and all the stuff we all love chatting about. You know, before we started this interview, me and Gary talk about Everton's wins in the last couple of games. And, uh, you know, and you do, you just have that, if you've got that, that love of, of some, something like football, it's really helpful in your life, you know, so we translates, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, this guy found me interesting because of that. And, um, and then, and I, off I go. So I get a job in property working for him. I worked for him for three years and, uh, learned the, learned the trade a little bit. So then I'd be around 28. Um, so I got to 28 and then what I wanted to do, was to work for myself. I started to realize that I was capable of, um, of, of being in charge, you know, and that was because 
a kind of good communicator, I think, you know, and, and again, from the family background, team player, you know, look after I'm people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and just generally, just kind of, you know, people skills were my strength, I think, and uh, started to understand that about myself. And, um, and, then, and then I had a, an eye for um, where, you could, where you could do well. So in business areas, I thought if I could if I could set myself up in as my own property business, then you know I'd go and go into Manchester, um, raise capital from investors in Manchester. Uh, I had no money myself, but I just thought I can probably attract people uh, to the proposition. So I would get the I would get the proposition, uh, which would be a, a site, an opportunity on land, and then I bring in. Um, investors to come into it and then I'd make that transaction work so they typically could be a brown a brownfield site which means something which has had an old factory on it as for example the factory's closed down might be a couple of acres and then I would I would uh, attract Matalan to come and take this take a new build store on the site or a, or a JJB or a carpet right or a Wix one of those and so I started to do a lot of out of town retail and retail parks, and uh, and then and then I progressed from that into shopping centres, built a lot of shopping centres, and that was my career really for twenty wow. years, and um, and became known, you know, up and down the UK, you know. So that was that was me. No, that's a yeah. that's brilliant, incredible story. Yeah. I think what's what's great about it, or for for me, Brendan is. The skills you talk about there, you know, the, the fundamentals, they're not, they're not rocket science, are they? You no. talk about being reliable, yes. you know, understanding yeah. your, a team dynamic and, and being part yeah. of the team, yeah. developing leadership skills, which only come yeah. with experience and time. Absolutely. And, and I think being, and being a people person, you know, yeah. and our students, a lot of the time, and I'm, I'm trying to kind of get in their mindset while they're watching this and be thinking, well, I couldn't do that, you know. A lot of the stuff you've done there, and this is yeah. not to be disrespectful, yeah. it's, it's stuff that any person can grasp yeah. Yeah. if they're willing to work hard and yeah. re- willing to persist with it. Yes, exactly, Gary. I think I the what what I what I say to my own children. You know, I have three children, and um, and the you know the nuggets of advice I give them is you know ultimately you've always got to figure out what people need and what people want. So you know, a good business is often giving people something they can't get. Yeah. So you fulfill a need, um, or you suddenly find you're trying to you're trying to get something, but you can't get it. So well, you you provide it then. You know that's the that's how you create a business. You you fulfill a need, um, and then you might be the guy everybody asks for certain things, and you suddenly think, hang on, this is a business opportunity because yeah. everyone keeps asking me to do yeah, this. Yeah. So you know then you you become the trusted provider, the trusted supplier for people. Um, and then uh, you you know reliability is huge in business. Mm. You know whether it's whether it's being able to manage money or being able to deliver on time. Timekeeping is really important in life. You know being you know turning up, doing the right thing, keeping time, and then and then in order to understand where the opportunities that you can engage with, um, I always tell my kids and our students. You, if you've got a particular passion, and and it's and it's a dynamic industry, you know where the new new innovations coming around all the time, you you need to sort of figure out where where the key people hang out, you know where what's their where their places of um, uh, when they're socialising, where do they hang out, when they're off duty, where do they hang out, what do they do. Copy that, learn that, you know, and then yeah. you you get yourself around it, get inspired by that, then and you then start to what I call fish where the fish are. So if you're if you're hanging out where they are, you learn, you learn because you start to hear what what's being discussed, and um, and it's important to be uh, curious all the time to pick up knowledge, pick up friends. Um, and understand what's new. Be ob- being objective about what's new, you know, because some of us, 
you know, we we you know we we might have a an interest or a hobby that we love, but nobody else does. Mm. But it but and it might be we're just viewing it. This is this is great because I think it's great, but it needs to be great because other people think it's great. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so that's but, what I mean. That's yeah. that's where that's where influencers have come from, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. modern exactly. social media, and whatever. They yeah. picked up on something that people enjoy, yeah. passionate about. Well. Let's 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 advertise that a little bit more, yeah. and let's get people looking at me. And, and yeah. you know, yeah. as as much as it might be seen as a bit of a vanity project, they're entrepreneurs in themselves, aren't they? And yeah, that's all they've done, really. Yeah, the yeah the capitalising on their yeah. on their interest. You know, yeah. people are interested in what they say, what they do, how they do it. Yeah. You know, and again, key words that you know uh, we we use a lot: uh, who, what, why, when, how. You know, so who who is it? You know. What is it they do? When are they doing it? Why are they doing it? How are they doing it? You know, figure out figure out your own actions and try and try and get a structure to that. You know, why are you doing something? How are you doing it? Could you do it better? Are you doing it with the right people in the right places? You know, just just you know, mate. You can. Everything is about your intent in life. If your intention is to do well, think about those words. Think about that that way of living, you know, and, and set your intent in a good way. You know, as Gary said earlier, everybody can be, um, be different and be, be, be famous. They can be successful they, and they can be great team players. Not everybody has to be in charge to be mm. successful. So you, you don't have to be the man who does, who creates everything, but you can be a, a great support man, you know, and I, Whenever I've done anything in in my career, I'm always trying to create a team. So I need I need An somebody. Entrepreneur. Who's, yeah, yeah. Entrepreneurs, yeah. entrepreneurs exactly. Yeah, yeah, people who want to work within a business and have that yeah. support. Yeah. We've got a lot of ideas that we can obviously yeah. contribute towards a successful yeah. venture. Yeah. yeah. So you 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 get the guy who's who's leading, but then you'll get the guys who are supporting, and the supporting team are often really dedicated to their subject areas that might be might be finance or it might be marketing um it might be analysis sports performance you know those so if you can be the best in the in the area your niche your field you're going to be invaluable you know and that gets people recognize that and back to yourself b i think that that brings mm. us perfectly onto it. that's what you've tried to create isn't it you know the yes. courses that, that capture the imagination of the audience and, and our yeah. students that yeah. they're interested in, but also, and more importantly, courses that encompass a lot of those skills that, that we're yes. talking about here. Yeah. No, I, what, what happened um, after I got involved with Burnley and then um, we, we, we were trying as a club to create links with the USA. Um, so I went over, did a tour of five, six clubs to create partnerships with, which were for recruitment partnerships. So in, in the US, you know, if you sign up a player, they can have a four-year contract and there's annual breaks for the club. So if the player's underperforming, you can release the player. Yeah. But if the player's good, you can keep the player. Um, and that's different to the UK player contracts. So yeah. you, you've got an opportunity to retain talent. And then we were looking at the pathway, which is becoming more, um, more, more public now, more a global club, you know, a club of clubs. So we were so we were looking at how we could do that, and you get players from North America. They might they might start life in South America, come into North America, then they might go to Belgium, get past The City Group are obviously very well now. Don't exactly, they? City Group are the market leaders. Yeah. Um, so we were looking at how we could achieve that for, with Burnley as part of it, and uh, Burnley becoming the shop window club. Um, we. So I was then sat in Chicago with a pal of mine, uh, Gary Meller, who's a sports agent, and we were discussing where to, could we create a club in the US? So we uh, we wrote six cities down on basically on a beer mat, you know, in the bar. And, uh, so and those I, are the best ideas. If you're yeah, <laughs> yeah, simple. Yeah, simple ideas. And again, going back to the point, intent. Yeah. You know, I said, right, I'll do Orlando because... I think it's, it's attractive. <laughs> yeah, it's sunny. Yeah, people want to work there. People yeah. want to play there. Um, it's a good place to live, and uh, and we can bring 
players out of South America into Orlando quite easily. Mm -hmm. So let's start a club in Orlando. So what do we do? We hire a stadium. It was the National Football Stadium, American football. Uh, we then we then get a guy on the ground who used to be in the ice hockey business. He was kind of like our head of commercial. Mm. And and then I get uh, I get a hold of Adrian Heath, who used to be an Everton player, yeah, yeah. legend. Uh, and we get him in to be head coach, and then we start to build a team. And um, Orlando City was was formed mm. in two thousand and ten. And and then it, within six years we were in the major league, um, a major league that was you know you have to have, build your own stadium, yeah. you have to get you 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 basically have to you know invest a lot you know mm. but again we didn't put all that capital in to mm. make that happen we were just good at making something interesting, yeah. so then when we cr we created the club um, on a shoestring relatively you know and. Um, and then we brought in a big Brazilian investor who put in a couple of hundred million dollars. And uh, yeah, that helps. And they, so six years later, me and Gary were sat together at the, the first game in the Major League, uh, Orlando City versus New York City, the Man City team. Yeah. There were 67,000 people in the stadium, wow. all wearing Orlando shirts. And that all started. Didn't have to empty Burnley for that one, did you? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But it, it shows you that dream and yeah. dream big and then set your intent, commit, do stuff, set your intent. You get the right it. people on board, exactly. as, you, as you clearly do yeah. along the way, yeah. And then what that brought back to my, my view on education is we learned a lot of American schools, skills. Yeah. So Americans, as we see now in the Premier League, they're investing a lot. They've, they're quite advanced on the business of sport. Uh, they understand how it works. They're really good at commercializing and, and monetizing and marketing yeah. and film content, etc. So we started to learn more about that and, and that helped me design UCFB. So UCFB, we say our three big areas, you know, which um, we, we bring students into the school for, uh, for finance and business, the school for uh, performance and coaching and then we've got the school for media and marketing communications so um, and we and we design our uh, teaching so that our facilities are close to big employers so that the the opportunity to get get internships or work placements with the major employers is high and then you and then you're rubbing up your familiarity with the with their marketplace is high and uh, and then when you're exiting university, they they know the standard of a UCFB student, and it becomes easier to get a job with the right people. And the UCFB students, obviously, then they get that exposure and they understand the expectations of the industry. Then in turn, yes. which, which is massively yeah. important, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And the, and as in sport, and again, I say this a lot to our students is that in sport you have to you have to be a dedicated but b you've got to have a passion for it mm. you know because i think um you do the it's a vocational workplace yeah so if you you know if you want to be an actor you've got to have a passion for acting if you want to be a musician you've got mm. to have a passion for music in sport you've got to have a passion for sport so i think for the kids who really show that you know then that they're going to be really successful yeah fantastic and i think the skills you're talking about there as well it transcends beyond sport, doesn't it? Yeah. So, you know, you, you've yeah. said openly that your journey wasn't always attached to football. No. You almost had to create yeah. that opportunity, didn't you? And, and you Absolutely. got the luxury of getting yeah. into football at the end. I think it's important yeah. to, to note that a lot of students, you know, and, and, and people, that won't necessarily be their first chance in football. No. It might be another industry. Yes. But you become yeah. successful and then you get that chance to then do what yeah. you want at the end of it, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I'd say... Again, life is, it's a marathon, not a sprint, you know, yeah. and you, so you, you know, you can go off and do something else to start with in life and then, and then you come back in. But as long as you're improving yourself along the way and learning and staying close to your passion, you know, the opportunities to jump back in will be there. Um, and the, you know, the sport's becoming, 
bigger and bigger every year. You know, you look at what the dawn of the women's game, the dawn of esports teams, um, you know, multi sport content on TV. You know, it's it's probably over fifty percent of what people watch. You know, and um, uh, so, so the demand for what we do, you know, professionalizing sport, you know, all the way through, it's it's becoming greater. And uh, nations nations um, brand themselves with the sports tournaments. So yeah. why is it important for you know the Middle East to hold That's the World right. Cup or Russia to hold the World Cup or China to hold the World Cup? You know they they want to make themselves look good and they want to show that they can be competitive in the in the world of sport. So That's the vehicle, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So they, so I think we. You know the importance in the of of uh, sport in politics is 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 bigger than anybody can imagine. You know it's uh, so so. How do we get? How do these countries get themselves into a position where they can be competitive? They need professionals from what I call the Silicon Valley of sport. You know it's here. You know we're the Silicon Valley. We are. Where where all the best young professionals in sport emerge from, uh, because we're UK, we're we're market leaders in many sports, and um, and we've got we've got what's called um, a established economy. So the those other countries I just mentioned are emerging economies in sport. We're an established economy, so we're trusted and we'll always be in the lead. And if we keep we keep on investing in our people and and producing the good outcomes for them, then we're only going to get stronger. Absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> you just touched on it there. The passport itself is an yeah. asset, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I go back to I, I spent a few years over in America, and the, the 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 respect almost that you command straight away coming from the UK yeah. with that football background or yes. soccer as it is over there yeah. is is not to be underestimated. And you get exactly yeah. the same across. The globe, I mean, I've went to Africa and I've worked there. I've went over to Asia, and instantly you yeah. step off the plane. It's like, oh, he's come up. Why is yeah. he here? He's come from yeah. England. Yeah, you know, he's, yeah. he knows football. He's worked with these yeah. these people. You know, and, and that's that's ultimately and go back to my original, not my original point, but one of my points around seeing that that the world is your is your opportunity. Yeah, it's so it's so important, isn't it? Absolutely. Stepping outside of your comfort zone, yeah. but but recognizing that you're going to go into that environment with some some strong assets behind you yeah, naturally yeah no absolutely gary i think i think what we what we all find when we go on these journeys you know where you're traveling and and developing yourself you know you come back with one one little nugget of inspiration yeah. from meeting somebody or you see you see a facility where you think wow i haven't seen that before you know if i could right. if i could get that facility built by my employer or mm. or somebody that that's investing with you you know that that can make the difference you know that's mm. how that's how ideas you know i'd say in in the world we're in which is why it's, it's so dynamic because you can import and export mm. different sports and um, you go out you go abroad you learn about something you import it into here it's the same with knowledge in soccer you know, bring that knowledge into here, and we can, we can again pivot and make ourselves better. And it's all about just being open to that, and uh, and getting yourself in the right place to learn. Listen, we've <clears throat> there's definitely a follow-on to this podcast. I can see it. <laughs> but listen, uh, I think we've I think we've got to to where we wanted to be today. First yeah. and foremost, it was to to announce the the partnership between Access Sports and UCFD, which we're delighted about, and. I'm sure as a student or a member of staff watching this, you'll take a lot from it. Um, in the link to our to this YouTube video, there'll be a, a link to, to UCFD's website. Yeah. There'll be plenty more to come from the both of us in terms of collaborations, opportunities from, for our students, current students to step into some of the UCFD campuses. And obviously our students that are that are leaving our programs, absolutely, you know, we, we want to advocate that next yeah. step and support that next step. But yeah. Brendan, thanks a lot for your time, mate. Thanks, Gary. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll look forward to catching up with you soon as well yeah great to meet everybody thank you cheers